Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 10th lecture of the course on Sociological Perspectives on Modernity. In the last lecture, we have discussed Max Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lenses of two central philosophical and political foundations of modernity namely holism or totality on the one hand and rationality on the other. In Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lens of holism or totality we have discussed how Marx is not a sociologist in the disciplinary sense for the simple reason is that he is not an academic. On the other hand, Weber on the contrary, on the contrary, Weber is or rather became a sociologist because he is living and working as an academic at the point where sociology is developing as a separate discipline. Indeed, Weber moves from the study of law, political economy and history to an identity as a sociologist. We have discussed this and, and such, such shift such shift from uh, uh, the study of law, political economy and, and uh, history to sociology uh, has enabled Weber to set out to define sociology as different from other humanities and social sciences and restricts its scope and ambit at least in theory. Okay? Okay? And, and more perhaps than any comparable sociological theorist to the point where uh, if we are to hold ourselves to his explicit statements, uh, I mean um, it would be impossible to describe him as a holist, okay? but not, not uh, in its entirety. When we come to rationality, we have already discussed how his, his analysis can be, can be uh, portrayed uh, as a holist. Okay. There are a number of steps in this narrowing of the jurisdiction of sociology. Okay. Uh, first, Weber takes what is known as a methodologically individualist position. Okay. If you slightly recall, we have discussed in methodological individualism, uh, there are three important things which are to be kept in mind. One, individuals. Secondly, individuals actions in, in certain circumstances, in certain con contexts um, and their and the kind of meanings that individual actions uh, um, and the kind of meanings which are attached to individual social actions. And thirdly, the reasons and motives of such individual social acts. Okay? I mean Weber assumes that all statements about the human world can in principle be reduced to statements about individuals and aggregates of individuals. In this sense, Weber treats individuals rather than relationships between and among individuals as primary. For I mean he treats individuals as primary not relationships between individuals. A consequence of this is that these relationships depend on active construction that they do not necessarily apply globally and that even when even where they do apply they can best be described in terms of the probability that the relationship or a process in question will apply in a particular case. 
Secondly, as we have discussed, Weber restricts the scope and ambit of sociology as a discipline to the study of only meaningful social action. I mean, in terms of value rational and goal rational social action. I mean, he was particularly interested in goal rational social action, I mean, alternatively known as instrumental rationality. In other words, to the action of these, these individuals, in so far as their action is oriented towards each other and in so far as they attach meaning to it. I mean, it involves an exclusion of biology of the unconscious potentially of some economic relationships and so on. So, Weber is not a straightforward holist in this sense. I mean, Weber undermines both the possibility of general explanations and, and the scope of sociology and the social itself to a very great extent. Nevertheless, uh, this theoretical refusal of holism is undermined by a number of features of his thinking, namely rationality. Okay? When we, when we come to uh, understand um, Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lens of rationality, okay, there, is a, there is a tension between uh, the statement that we, that we start from individuals rather than relationships and the statement that we are interested in is the way those individuals orient their action to each other, I mean in other words interaction. That is why uh, we, we from the very beginning we, we have mentioned, we have discussed that how Weber treats individuals as primary not relationships between individuals. And the effect of this becomes clear when we consider the second element of Weber's definition of sociology that it is not just about social action, but about meaningful social action. How he defined sociology? Uh, I mean sociology is a science one which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action, two, in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects, three. Okay? Then it is not simply about social action, but about meaningful social action. Okay? And, and Weber then proceeds to develop a, a categorization of the types of meaning which can be attached to social action. I mean a categorization which appears in some sense as a, as a general statement of the kinds of ways in which people can relate to one another or in other words precisely the kind of general statement about social relationships that methodological individualism finds suspect. And these types of social action reappear in a, in a number of forms for example, as the different ways in which a given power structure can find legitimacy. Okay? Then what are these types of social action? What is the typology of social action that Weber discussed? There are four types of social action uh, which um, uh, Weber outlined as we have already discussed traditional social action, affective or emotive social action, value rational social action and goal rational social action. Traditional social action is based on habits and customs. Hence, for Weber, they, they, I mean they, they, they are coming close to having no meaning okay? and because they are unreflective in nature. Okay. Habits and customs, uh, we, we, we generally do not tend to question, we should question, but we generally, when we question, because we have a goal, if we do not question, then it becomes a habit, it becomes a custom. Okay. When we question, it becomes a meaningful social action, if we do not question, then it does, it, it, it is meaningless. Affective or emotive social action, which is based on emotions, okay, is equally seen by Weber as often meaningless in these terms because it is also unreflective in nature. Okay. The, the major distinction of clearly meaningful uh, social action that is between the last two categories, that is, value rational uh, action uh, and goal rational action or instrumental rationality. What is that value rational 
axon. Valued axonal axon uh, is based on values. It treats axon as having a value in itself, which is independent from its effect and derives, uh, for example, from moral, aesthetic, or religious criteria. Uh, if I say honesty is the best policy, that is a value. Speak the truth always, that is a value. Okay. Uh, values also should be interrogated over time and across space. Okay. When I come to goal rational, when I came, when I when we discussed goal rational action or instrumental rationality, which is oriented purely towards desired results, I mean goal rational social action or instrumental rationality is is particularly associated with Weber's account of modernity, which Weber sees as a progressive extension of this principle of instrumental rationality, which sees action as deriving its sole meaning and interest from its results to dominate all contemporary society. Okay. For, for, for Weber, we have discussed the history of modernity is, is the history of the progressive orientation of all social action in all contexts to instrumental rationality. And this rationalization of social life involves an ever greater development of technical means and a progressive orientation of the ends towards which these means are supposed to lead. Okay. For, for, for example, in the protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism, Weber argues that Calvinist and dissenting religion represented a rationalization of human behavior which focused people's constant attention on the relationship between their everyday activity and their hope of salvation. All behavior was scrutinized to see whether or not it represented a waste of time and thus, and thus possibly an indication that one was not destined for salvation. And this obsession with making the most of each minute with the rationalization of everyday life particularly economic life okay, uh, gradually came to take complete precedence over the intended goal of demonstrating to oneself that one was likely to be destined for salvation. Okay. Uh, Weber's, Weber's analysis of the development of bureaucracy again is similar. Bureaucracy for Weber is simply the most technically efficient means of organizing the action of a state. I mean, it is a byproduct of capitalist mode of production. Thus, thus bureaucratic means of organization come to predominate in, in uh, modern societies, capitalist societies, um, irrespective of the actual goals which they are supposed to serve. Increasingly, bureaucracy takes on a life and logic of its own that renders its ultimate goal irrelevant. In Weber's terminology, formal rationality, the instrumental rationality of a particular form leads to substantive rationality. Can you slightly recall what we have discussed? I mean, substantive rationality emphasizes more on methods, modes, means, whereas instrumental rationality always aims at goals, ends, uh, objectives, desired results and so on. I mean, in, uh, I mean, in Weber's terminology, uh, formal rationality, uh, uh, the instrumental rationality of a particular form okay, that leads to substantive rationality, a content which is in fact derived from the form and not the goal that the formal rationality is sup supposed to serve. Okay. In this context, for Weber, capitalism itself is a very important instance of this general rationalization of behavior that characterizes modern society. And, and Weber defines it in terms of the rationalization of the pursuit of profit, a rationalization which ultimately implies that the individuals to whom this profit is not accruing uh, uh, are not in a position to enjoy its uh, possession but must rationalize their own lives, replacing an aristocratic lifestyle based effectively on the service of profit rather than its enjoyment. Once again, the means becomes the end. Weber's account of modernity 
as the progressive extension of rationalization and his skepticism about the possibility of reversing this trend makes his view of modernity at least effectively a holistic one. Okay. In this sense, against the uh, lens of, against the backdrop of uh, holism or totality, Weber's account of modernity is not a holistic one. But, but against the backdrop of rationality, Weber's account of modernity okay, uh, is effectively a holistic one. Okay. Having discussed this in this lecture, uh, I, I mean we have, we have already discussed this, but in this lecture we are going to uh, 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 examine, uh, uh, um, um, we are going to dwell upon uh, Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lens of social movements. Weber's view of social movements nevertheless is less holistic. We will we'll discuss this, I mean why we are saying it is less holistic. And, and here Weber serves as a, a prototype for that approach which sees structures, I mean structure may be represented through economy, through culture, through uh, religion, through rationality and so on. For example, as, as ultimately more deeply founded than collective action. Okay. For him only individual social action was important, not collective social action. That is why I reiterate the, the, the point that that uh, Weber's view about social movements, however, uh, is less holistic and here he serves as a prototype for that approach which sees structures of rationality for example, as ultimately more deeply founded than collective action, even if both are of course, uh, his own terminology simply for, uh, forms of uh, um, meaningful social acts. This can be illustrated in relation to his approach to class. Okay. It, is, it is traditional to represent Weber's view on class as representing a rejection of Marxists. There is some truth in this, but it is only partial. <coughs> For example, I mean how did uh, Marx conceptualize class? According to Marx, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation. Classes are constituted not on the basis of the income that one earns, but uh, on the basis of uh, the position that one occupies in the process of production. Okay, that is why I gave you this example that for example, for if there are two blacksmiths, one the owner and the other a paid worker both belong to two classes not one. Marx was not the first to discover social classes or their plights, many philosophers did it before him. But Marx came to the sta center stage when he said the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways, the point however is to change it. The society Marx uh, uh, has examined has traversed through various stages namely hunting and gathering economy, um, uh, the slave society, the feudal society and the capitalist society which will move on to, uh, which will unstoppably move on to uh, socialism and thereafter communism. Okay. I mean, I mean the, 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 the that is why uh, when he said the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles in the manifesto of the communist party of 1848, what where Weber agrees with Marx? Weber agrees with Marx that the workers movement is an extremely significant and power, powerful movement and even sees a successful illustration of a socialist regime as a possibility. However, Weber argues that it will be forced to adopt bureaucratic means in order to reach this goal 
and hence that the socialist regime would represent an intensification of instrumental rationalization of at the expense of any possibility of achieving the substantive rationalities uh, that were aimed at. Equally, okay, uh, equally uh, Weber accepts that not only that economic class is a fundamental basis for social action, but even that status differences are increasingly eroded by economic class in, in uh, modern society. Okay. Then in this in this in the context of social movements and social classes uh, class position, let us first see um, what are the primary differences between Weber and Marx on class this is important. See on class there, there, there are certain differences between Marx and Weber, on, on social movements there are certain differences between Marx and Weber. Okay. Um, we will see what are two, two primary differences that uh, we find uh, between Weber and Marx on class. The, the first is their the first is in their conception of the economic class structure that underlies class movements. Okay. For Marx as we have seen this, this kind of economic class structure that underlies class movements can ultimately be reduced to a primary po opposition between the exploiters and the exploited. Those who labor, uh, I mean those who, uh, uh, I mean when I say um, a primary opposition between the exploited and the exploiters, between the have nots and the haves, between the proletariat and the bourgeois, I mean those who, between those who labor and those who live off their labor not on their labor, they live off, they live away from their labor. Okay. For Weber, however, economic situation is not so much a relationship as a given, which individuals bring to a market. Schematically, we can say that individuals bring their labor power or their skills or their ownership of the means of production to a market and it is this market situation for Weber that generates the life chances of each individual. In other words, Weber's economic classes are more heterogeneous and less interactive than Marx's. This conception at least cannot be said to be holistic. Okay. Let us, let us first of all uh, discuss this how it happens. Okay. To bring about a social and political revolution, Marx focuses more on how to create a common platform for the working class to wage a revolution against the capitalist class, against the existing mode of production against the existing exploitative mode of production. On the contrary, what Weber sees or Weber foresees that working classes are not homogeneous getting. And agricultural workers interests must be different from industrial work. If the interests of a farmer must be different from the interests of uh, a banker, one must understand that. But for, for, for Marx, a banker undergoes as much exploitation as the farmer also undergoes, at least in theory. 
because if you look at the hierarchical structure that a bank projects, the hierarchical structure that, that an agricultural cultivator is, is confronted with remains the same. Okay? I mean similar exploitative structures are inherent. You look at call centers for example, how are the workers treated there? For Marx, you have to stage a common platform, you have to constitute a common platform to, to organize your revolt against the powers that be. I mean you have to bring in the commonality of, of the class interests, but I mean uh, in spite of um, the, the, the differences of your occupations. Okay? That is why he said let the ruling classes tremble at a communist revolution, the proletarians have nothing to lose, but their chains they have a world to win, workers of all countries unite. Okay. But for Weber, I mean Weber was particularly interested or Weber was particularly concerned with the heterogeneity of the class structure that, that uh, uh, we witnessed mm. across the continents. Even today we witness that kind of thing, that heterogeneity. But for Marx, no. If, in spite of such heterogeneity, he tried to bring about certain commonality to, uh, 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 to such. Uh, uh, differing class interests. Okay. That is that is why uh, it is very important that is why if, if for Marx classes are manifestations of economic differentiation, okay. for Weber classes are based on life chances and causal components. What are life chances? I mean we can say that schematically we can we can we can say that individuals bring their labor power or their skills or their ownership of the means of production to a market and it is this market situation for Weber that generates the life chances of each individual. When I say life chances, I mean the, the opportunities, social, economic, um, uh, political, cultural opportunities uh, for the individuals. Putting it succinctly, Weber's economic classes are more heterogeneous as compared to that of Marx's and hence Weber's economic classes are, are less interactive than that of Marx's okay. and this conception at least um, cannot be said to be holistic. Okay. Then what is the, the other major difference, uh, we, we said uh, there are two primary differences between Marx and Weber on, on, on class. The secondly, I mean the other major difference which, which Weber uh, brings to his analysis of social movements is the concept of social closure. What is this social closure? Weber uh, I mean Weber treats this, uh, um, I mean Weber treats social closure as a process uh, whereby groups aim at restricting access to particularly desirable things, namely occupations, goods, status or whatever to themselves. We have seen how certain food items, certain I mean water, I mean I mean food items, water, um, uh, clothes. Okay, there are certain restrictions by certain uh, communities, certain caste groups, certain uh, uh, groups. Okay, and we generally find 
if you if you look at indian caste system okay for a long time it was based on occupation hierarchy more and more stratificatory systems are in, uh, have been involved in this for a long time okay what i'll consume will define my caste okay these are the things that both both weber and marx uh, uh, challenged interrogated questioned okay this this particular that uh, for for uh, for marx it was all about inequality for weber it is social closure that certain certain food items are um, uh, open to me but not to you i can i can consume this you cannot consume this i cannot consume that but you can consume that this is for this is a pre modern way of thinking for weber or as well as marx marx studied it in the, in the context of inequality studies whereas weber coined the term social closure okay and and the, 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 this is the this is a major difference which weber brings to his analysis of social movements that that is uh, the concept of social closure weber treats or weber examines social closure as a process whereby groups different uh, social groups economic groups political groups cultural groups aim at restricting access to particularly desirable things namely occupations goods statuses and so on to themselves and and uh, much of weber's writing okay deals with the extent to which successful collective action results in this kind of social closure for the sake of exercising a monopoly on something in in uh, i mean uh, uh, recently neo weberians such as frank parkin um, have argued that access to political power itself is such a good um, and that a major aim of collective action is to move from an outsider status of exclusion to an insider status where the group enjoys a monopoly of influence on political power uh, on the uh, issues that are important to it what is this power there is a difference between power and authority authority is legal whereas power is not okay uh, the way the way if if authority is legal uh, then weber classified authority into three types okay i mean traditional authority uh, a rational legal authority and charismatic authority what kind of traditional authority those in the pre traditional authority was used to be exercised in the pre modern age that there will be no rationality there will be no law, legality there will be only exercise of your of your power based on your social and economic position maybe race in the west caste in india patriarchy gender disparity all these things they have contributed to the domain of um, domain of such hierarchies uh, uh, across the continents okay even colonialism see see colonialism also uh, uh, i mean colonialism the way it exercised its power it was not absolutely traditional nor is it absolutely rational legal they tried to create legality to exploit others okay when i say rational legal i mean then we started questioning religious institutions we started uh, creating courts to protect the interests of the marginalized and and when weber dwelt upon uh, the notion of uh, charismatic authority okay 
Weber was specifically referring to the, the, the way a few individuals can, can bring in uh, uh, at a very, I mean in quick time they can bring in thousands of people at a time through their speeches, through their accents. Suppose Gandhi was a charismatic leader, Gandhi had charismatic authority. Nelson Mandela had charismatic authority, Fidel Castro had charismatic authority. With one call, they could uh, mobilize thousands of people. Mao was a charismatic, uh, uh, Mao had charismatic authority, Mao Shatum, Martin Luther King. With one call, Uh, you see, even even um, uh, many many um, uh, people can say that I mean um, this this charismatic authority. Uh, I mean, it is also debatable. I can I can include I can exclude people. I mean, what I mean to say here that uh, when I say I, when I talk about charismatic authority. I have a, I, I want to see the leadership qualities. What Robert Bierstedt talked about, he, he, he talked about leadership in the sense of charismatic authority. Okay. Okay. This is a, this is a more reflexive position that, that I want to take while dwelling upon social movements, because I must be a part of this setup to, to evaluate this setup. I cannot be associate, I cannot dissociate myself from the setup to talk about this. This brings in to the fold that how can we be reflexive about social movements. Okay? Then, then till now, till now, what we have discussed, we have discussed uh, 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 Weber's interpretation of modernity uh, through um, uh, the lens of social movements. How Weber's view on social movements is less holistic, okay, uh, and and. Uh, uh, why why uh, it is less holistic there is there is another uh, argument to make suppose marx foresaw uh, how the how the working classes are going to seize power from the powers that be okay how the working classes can seize power from the uh, from the uh, exploiters, from the owners of the means of production, and then there will be dictatorship of the proletariat. I mean, the proletarian revolution will take place so that uh, a world will be a um, uh, uh, a place. Uh, uh, the world will be marked by equality justice, liberty, uh, freedom uh, and so on. But Weber also uh, could, could foresee this kind of a trend, Weber also thought okay, maybe at times um, this, this, this may be a possibility, there, there may be a possibility, it may be possible, but, but the way he was trying to sketch proletarian revolution, new social order, uh, overthrowing of capitalism uh, and, and uh, there will be a new dawn, um, D A W N. there will be a new dawn um, in the form of socialism uh, that as uh, Marx said, 
socialism will be born from the womb of capitalism. Okay. Weber did not see that, Weber could not foresee this. For, for Weber, what will be our future? For Marx, what will be our future? Our future will be quite bright, I, our future uh, uh, is in the hands of the working classes, working classes will overthrow capitalism and they will bring about a new social order marked by socialistic pattern of society. For Weber, no, the future is an iron case rather than a garden of Eden. Weber becomes a little less optimistic as compared to Marx okay, in the case of social movements. Okay. That is why Weber's account of Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lenses of holism or totality as well as social movements okay, is, uh, is less holistic. Whereas, Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lens of uh, rationality is a holistic one. Okay. Now, let us have a reflexive position about this. So, when we, when we try to look at Weber's uh, interpretation of modernity through the lens of uh, uh, reflexivity, okay. uh, Weber's um, theory uh, in particular, I mean his in particular his analysis of modernity as rationalization starts from an individualist point of view, but tends towards a holistic one, which is to a certain extent inherent in the idea of the social. Okay. For Marx, the rational is the real. Okay. For Marx, uh, it is not the individual, but the social relationships are important, social interaction is more important. But for Weber, no individual is more important as compared to relationships between individuals. But, but, but Weber's theory in particular his analysis of modernity as rationalization starts from an individualist point of view, but tends towards a holistic one, which is to a certain extent inherent in the idea of the social. Weber's concept of social movements emphasizes their partial character. But Weber is always concerned to emphasize that collective action is also a feature of dominant groups, not just of subordinate ones. And he offers us a picture of dominant groups controlling the state and monopolizing access to desirable goods. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, when I say um, uh, Weber offers us a picture of dominant groups controlling the state and monopolizing access to desirable goods, thanks thanks to uh, thanks to the success of their organization, um, which can be said to offer the potential of a general account of the dominant social order. Okay, if not the totality of the social order, because there are also outsider and subordinate groups challenging this order. Okay. Then what about reflexivity? Okay. Weber like Marx is well aware of, uh, well aware of the fact that uh, the sociologist also is a social actor. Basing himself like Marx on the principle that the real is the created, that the social world is a human creation, Weber argues that our own status as social actors makes it possible for us to understand the action of others and in particular the meaning they attach to it. Okay. This, is, this is the starting point of what is generally described as Weber's concept of Verstehen or understanding. Okay. In other words, uh, if I have to say uh, Verstehen or understanding, in other words it is also way of interpretation. 
because interpretation itself is subject to interpretation. Thereby, we uh, tend to aim at multiple interpretations or interpretation of interpretations. I mean, we, we interpret the action of others based on our said uh, human situation, common situation and participation in the creation of the social world. Okay. Uh, remembering in particular that one of Weber's caveats about traditional and emotional reasons for action, I mean traditional social action and affective or emotive social action is that I mean they are highly unreflective that they are not thought about it is reasonable to say that it is reflexivity for Weber that guarantees the possibility of interpretation and 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 this is another reason why Weber treats traditional uh, uh, and a traditional social action on the one hand and affective or emotive social action on the other as failing on the borders of the social. Only value rational and goal rational action are, are, uh, uh, can come under the category of the social. Okay. A, a, a major element in the method of Verstehen is what Weber describes as ideal types. Okay. What are ideal types? I mean, I mean ideal types uh, <coughs> sorry ideal types are models which describe rules of the way things happen in a way that makes sense to us what are these rules i mean what are these models no. i mean we we um, we might construct an ideal typical description of the way in which religions founded by a charismatic prophet become over time highly structured organizations. Maybe uh, religions uh, or ethos um, founded by a single charismatic priest. Okay become over time highly structured organizations, highly at times highly structured militant organizations. The relationship of this model to the way things actually happen is then variable. In general, Weber says it helps us to develop these models at as abstracted a level as possible, so that the concepts become uh, as unambiguous as possible and their interrelationship is as clear as possible. And these ideal types are then yardsticks against which we can measure what actually happened. In, in other words, the ideal type is a description of a particular logic of process or of a rational sequence of events in the sense of one where their sequence has a meaning. Clearly, they will be um, uh, far easier in the case of value rational uh, uh, social action or, or instrumental rationality sequences since an assumption continued uh, um, custom tells us very little about the content of the custom. Okay. Uh, when, I, when I say this, uh, I mean it refers to certain assumptions that emotions follow particular sequences which are very risky. In other words, it is rationality itself whether goal rational or value rational social action what makes interpretation possible on the basis of a shared and reflexive participation in the social world. Okay. It is very important. Okay. Uh, Beyond, beyond, uh, beyond the specific case of rationalization as a general process in modernity, then, then rationality for Weber is a concept which bridges the gap between sociology and its objects. I mean, a rationality in either form is present 
as a tendency within society which may be approximated to a greater or lesser extent the sociologist can use this tendential rationality to make more sense of the actual processes of events. Clearly then the, the more rationalized um, uh, society becomes the deeper into modernity we go. That is why Weber's account of modernity through the lens of rationality is a holistic one. Okay? I mean the more rationalized a society becomes the deeper into modernity we go, the easier the sociologist's tasks should become and the closer their interpretations should correspond with what actually happens. As we shall see in subsequent lectures, this expectation uh, has only been partially uh, realized if at all. I mean uh, in, the, in the lectures to follow, we will discuss uh, um, uh, ultra modernism, I mean the structuralist case, the structuralist interpretation of modernity uh, through the works of uh, um, Levi Strauss and uh, Louis Althusser. Uh, it is very important to uh, uh, look at uh, these, these uh, uh, such variety of works by, uh, by uh, Levi Strauss and Althusser so far as the interpretation of modernity is concerned. Okay. Then I mean in this lecture through this lecture we have covered two important modules namely the sociological modernism I mean the classic statements of about um, sociological modernism and, and uh, I mean I mean first one thematic preliminaries and then classical classic statements of sociological modernity. These two themes we have covered in these 10 lectures. Okay. Then what we have discussed in this lecture, we, we in this in today's lecture we started with uh, our discussion on, uh, on Mark, uh, uh, Max Weber's interpretation of modernity uh, through the lens of social movements. I mean how Weber's move view on social movements is less holistic and here he serves as a prototype for that approach which he which sees structures of rationality for example as ultimately more deeply founded than collective action even though both are of course his own terminology simply forms of meaningful social action this can be uh, I mean I mean uh, if we discuss social class then his uh, this analysis becomes more clear it is traditional to represent Weber's um, um, uh, views on class as representing a re rejection of Marx's, uh, but, but, but it is partially true. For example, Weber agrees with Marx that the workers movement is an extremely significant and powerful movement and even sees the a successful illustration of, of, a, of a socialist regime as a possibility. Nevertheless, Weber argues that it will be forced to, I mean this, this new socialist regime will be forced to adopt bureaucratic means in order to reach this goal and hence that the socialist regime would represent an intensification of instrumental rationalization at the expense of any possibility of achieving the substantive rationalities that were aimed at. Equally, Weber accepts that not only the that economic class is a fundamental basis for social action, but even that status differences are increasingly eroded by economic class in modern society. That is how we tend to, we have discussed how there are two primary differences between uh, Weber and Marx on class, I mean one on the basis of social class, I mean uh, as for Marx, uh, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation. For Weber, classes are based on life chances and causal components. And the other major difference which Weber brings to his analysis of social movements is the, is the concept of social closure. Uh, social closure is a process whereby groups aim at restricting access to particularly desirable things, namely occupations, goods, statuses and so on. And uh, when we discussed Weber's uh, interpretation of modernity through the lens of reflexivity, I mean Weber's analysis of modernity as rationalization starts from an individualist point of view, but tends towards a holistic one which is to a certain extent inherent in the idea of the social. Okay? Weber's 
concept of social movements emphasizes their partial character, but Weber is always concerned to emphasize that collective action is also a feature of dominant groups, not just of subordinate ones. And he offers us a picture of dominant groups controlling the state and monopolizing access to desirable goods. Then, when he, when, while dwelling upon reflexivity, okay, uh, the, I mean, thus the Weber's concept of Verstehen is very important. I mean, understanding or, or as we say of interpretation, we interpret the action of others based on our shared human situation and participation in the creation of the social world. Okay. Then, from a major element in the method of Verstehen is what Weber described describes as ideal types, which we have discussed. I mean, ideal types are models which describe rules of the way things happen in a way that makes sense to us. Okay, and then uh, we have discussed how ideal type is a description of a particular logic of process or of a rational sequence of events in the sense of one where their sequence has a meaning okay and therein lies the significance of value rational social action and instrumental rationality okay i mean goal rational social action okay in the next lecture we are going to discuss ultra modernism the structuralist interpretation of of modernity okay uh, in this we are going to discuss the works of of levi strauss and louis althusser again through the lenses of four central philosophical and political uh, foundations of modernity namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Thank you.